Welcome to our Bible study. I'm excited to have you. It is my prayer for you that you will continue to increase in the knowledge of God's will for your life. Ultimately, that you walk in His counsel for your life while you are here on earth. We've been studying about faith um, in the scripture and today we will continue in the same uh, manner and understand what faith truly means. Don't forget that faith is that tool that you need to obey God. It's the tool of obedience. So as we study more about Abraham, and also I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the story in the New Testament as recorded in the book of Luke chapter 17 verse 11. There is need for us to see how Jesus Christ uh, talked to people about faith. And I think it's incredible to start from the story of the 10 lepers so that I'll be able to see what I've been talking to you about concerning faith, obedience, fellowship, and things like that. Let us pray as we get started. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this awesome grace. I particularly want to say thank you for the privilege that I have to receive revelation from your scripture, even as I bring it to your people. I pray that you take over my vocal cord and speak expressly to their minds, that they will be able to appropriate these teachings into their daily lives. Thank you, everlasting God. In Jesus Christ's name, I have prayed. Amen. Let us remind ourselves quickly about the definition of faith as recorded in Hebrews uh, chapter 11. But I've made it clear to you that it's more than definition. It's more like a description of faith. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the way you can know that you are operating in faith is if you have zero understanding of how it's going to happen, but you are hoping for it. For example, the Bible says Christ in us, the hope of glory. So in other words, we are beholding him like in a mirror, beholding Christ daily until the coming of the Lord, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are beholding Christ in us daily. We look forward to the kingdom of God as well. So that is faith. When you, tr when you exercise your authority in the understanding of the kingdom of God, you are preaching in faith. That is why you must devote yourself and fellowship with the Spirit of God to be in tune with what is happening in the kingdom of God so that you can bring the will of the Father as it is in heaven on earth. So it's important for you to understand this uh, principle when we talk about faith. Let me remind you also about the steps of faith. Number one thing you have to do is to fellowship with God, identify who God is, and then fellowship it is from the place of fellowship that you will receive instruction, um, instruction that will lead you or guide you for the rest of your life. So from the place of fellowship, you receive instruction. Of course, you must understand how he speaks to you. So you hear the instruction of God and then you use faith to obey the instruction of God. At the end of the day, you will receive the reward of obedience and then you make Christ known. So um, I've made it clear to you also that the reward of obedience is not necessarily something that we appeal to your emotion. It's not something that we appeal to your flesh. The reward of obedience is ultimately to reign with Christ in eternal glory. That is the peak of our faith, that we will obey God while we are here on earth until the end of the age. So it's important for you to note that. So even if you are praying to God or you're trusting God for certain things and you're not seeing the manifestation of that, you hold on to faith. You hold on to the fellowship you have with God until the end of age. So in other words, you will not let go of God. You will not accuse God of not being in existence because some of the things you are feeling in your flesh um, are not palatable. Again, even if he slay you, you will still trust him to be the Lord of your life and you can reign with him in eternal glory. All right, so let's look at uh, the book of Genesis. We've been studying about Abraham. We've been studying about how God made a promise to him 
uh, the promise of the land, uh, the promise of how his seed is going to be so great. So we started studying from uh, Genesis chapter 14. And I, I read to you last time from verse 17 to 24. And also we read from verse, uh, chapter 15 verse 1. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, quickly before I take you to the story of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, where he healed the ten lepers. So let's take a look quickly at Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. That was when he, after he had encounter with Melchizedek, the king of Salem. And I've made it clear to you that the word Melchizedek is king of righteousness. And we know that Jesus Christ is our king of righteousness in new dispensation that we have. In uh, Genesis 14 verse 19, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithe of all. I talked a little bit about tithe because the movement of faith and the word of faith um, have been strongly associated with tithing, have been strongly associated with you give something, then you receive something, but you must give it in faith. You must tithe in faith, and then you will get the reward. And that is why some people try to play games with God and say, oh, if I can give uh, $100 to God this Sunday, so God is going to bless me. I have faith in this $100, then I'll be able to get $1,000 in return. No, it doesn't work like that. That is not how faith works. Let me tell you a secret. The secret is that in the place of fellowship is where you will receive instruction to give your tithe. Right? So if this from the instruction that you have, knowing that you've been greatly blessed by God and God is instructing you to give something. It must come from the place of fellowship. It doesn't matter what I'm telling you. It doesn't matter what the preacher is saying. It's the principle of the word of God. Tithing is the principle of the word of God. But you must connect it back to the place of fellowship. You must connect the understanding of giving to the place of fellowship where you receive instruction to know what to give. All right. So when you receive instruction and God is instructing you, instead of 10%, give 20, give 40, give 60. So it's not going to matter about the percentage, but we understand from the place of um, the scripture that tithe is, uh, is, is an act of giving from the place of instruction and the place of fellowship. You can see that the first evidence we have about uh, tithing was the encounter Abraham had with Meshizedek after he won the victory. So from the abundance of the victory, from knowing the victory he has received, he could give ten, he could give tithe, he could give ten percent back to King of Salem, the King of Righteousness, Jesus Christ. But over time, uh, it, it, it turned to be uh, uh, a, a principle. It turns to be a way of life, and it was recorded in the law. But we're going. It is not a subject for today. But let's take a look quickly at Genesis fifteen, verse uh, verse four. 4 to 6, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, so now we're beginning to see frequent instruction from God. After he gave tithe, we, had, we started seeing different um, rela relationship, level of relationship between Abraham and, and God. But let's go quickly to uh, verse 2. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. Now, pay attention, God talked about his character. God talked about who he is. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. All right, so if that is your attribute, then how come I'm childless? It is something that we also can relate to today. We can easily challenge God based on our understanding of who he is. We can uh, request based on the understanding of who 
uh, God is, we can make our request known to him because we know him from the place of fellowship. I believe you understand what I'm trying to say, that it is the, the more you know God, the more you know his ability. The more you fellowship with him, the more you start to understand the dynamics, his way of dealing with you, specifically with you. So Abraham talked to him and behold, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this man, this shall not be thy heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowers shall be thy heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Ha. Ah. So God was making Abraham to walk in these steps. Right, so God took him out. Look at the stairs. Look at the uh, stars. As great as they are, so shall your seed be. And this is where I want you to pay careful attention to this story before I take you to the New Testament. Because uh, during the course of, of the week, as I was trying to think about this subject of faith, God ministered to me that I have to take you specifically to that story of the scripture that Jesus Christ healed the ten lepers. And we'll be able to see what God really wants us to know about this story. But let me read this uh, verse 6. The Bible says, And Abraham, he believed God, he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. His first encounter was with Meshisedek, the king of righteousness. But when Abraham believed in God, you can see the connection. The Bible says it was accounted to him for righteousness. The righteousness of God rubbed on him because he believed in God. The righteousness of God rubbed on Abraham because he believed in God from the place of fellowship he received covenants from God, he believed it, and the Bible says it was accounted for him for righteousness. We're talking about Old Testament. In New Testament, we are the righteousness of God. But the more we know Christ, the more we will see, the more the righteousness of God will start to illuminate heart of us. And then when we walk, we walk as if it is in us, real, for real. It is in us and people can see God's righteousness through us, through our behavior, through our conduct, because we believed in him from the place of fellowship. I'm not talking about going to church. Going to church is a different, is a different thing entirely, but it's important. But I'm talking about when you raise an altar of fellowship in the secret place, so that when you go outside in the open, people will see Christ's righteousness in you because there are certain things he has revealed to you in the secret place that is illuminating in your behavior, in your conduct, in your character. And when people see this, oh, they will be able to see God's righteousness in you. That is what I'm talking about. So the Bible says, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. So when we believe God, it is accredited to us for righteousness. If God is saying that my promise concerning you is yea and amen, you believe that it is righteousness. If God is saying that you will not be sick, if God is saying that you, you will not be poor, you believe that it is accredited to you for righteousness. Even if you are not seeing the evidence. Even if you are not seeing the evidence. If the scripture is saying, be thou holy as thy Lord is holy. If you believe that, it is accredited to you for righteousness because it is from the place of fellowship. If God is saying that don't walk in this path and you believe strongly in that, it is accredited to you for righteousness. So your knowledge of faith in the scripture, it is what is accredited to you for righteousness. And it is the understanding of that that will guide your life to make you walk and live a life of holiness. But you have to fellowship to know you have to believe from the place of fellowship. Follow the instruction of God and then it will be accredited to you for righteousness so you can walk boldly to the throne of grace and to the throne of mercy to receive grace upon grace as you continue the journey of faith. Let's look at this story in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. 
Uh, this was when Jesus Christ gave instruction about forgiveness. Uh, in Luke 17, 1, they said, He unto the disciples, it is impossible, but the offense will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a mic stone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones take it to yourself if thy brother trespass against thee rebuke him and if he repent forgive him and if he trespass against thee seven times in the day and seven times in the day turn again to thee saying i repent thou shalt forgive him and the apostle said unto the lord increase our faith <laughs> ah interesting interesting jesus christ was talking about uh the capacity to forgive he was talking about you know is you can't if you if you believe in me that does not mean that the whole world is going to do the same if you have true understanding of who i am that does not mean that Every other person in your family or those around you, we have the same level of understanding. So offenses will come. But do one thing, rebook the offender. And if there's repentance, forgive. Huh? <laughs> and the disciples were like, no, no, you are driving us crazy. You better increase our faith. You know, faith is required to forgive. And the understanding of forgiveness comes from fellowship. If you are not fellowshipping with God, you probably will not have understanding of, you know, I need to go make amends. Because the Spirit of God will convict you in the place of fellowship that forgive this person. Say to this person, it's okay. It, it, it's all right. I'm hurt, but I just want to let go so that the strength of my fellowship can improve because without forgiveness the strength of your fellowship cannot get the chance to improve or to be better and that was why jesus christ gave an analogy that if you for, if you offend if somebody offends you or you offend somebody all you have to do is put your offering at the altar go make amends then come back that is that is how it works so the strength of your fellowship is tied to your ability to quickly forgive other people. And that is how your faith will get the chance to measure up to the kind of faith God is talking about. But we want to, you know, we play church. Then we go back and we are bitter. We go back out there, we start causing problems in our workplace because we are yet to forgive the boss, yet to forgive the co-workers. And then we want to go again to the place of fellowship and God is saying, why are you deceiving yourself? Make amends, come back. The strength of your fellowship depends on your ability to forgive other people. I know sometimes it's tough to forgive. But for, the, for you to have um, a level of faith, in the place of fellowship that God will be able to speak to you and you will be able to, you'll be able to hear him correctly, you need to forgive. But Jesus Christ was talking about this and the disciples were like, you're driving us crazy. Increase our faith. Well, let's see how Jesus did that in Genesis 17. And the Lord said unto, him, unto them, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this psychomite tree, be thou plucked all by the roots, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. It shall obey you. But which of you, having a servant plowing or, feed, or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meat? And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and guard thyself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunken? And afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Now, the story that God wants me to talk to you about is in verse 11. So let's see that because it's, it's, um, it's all connected. 
We're talking about faith. The disciples asked them, increase our faith because you're talking about forgiving other people, increase our faith. And again, you're talking about these things that is so complex. Oh yeah. Okay. Then Jesus Christ was well positioned where we have 10 lepers. And don't forget, um, in, in the context of Christ, we have people of Samaria, of Galilee, and of Judea, all uh, not too far apart from each other. And there is this level of division, understanding of who Jews are, who, uh, who are not Jews, the things that are supposed to be done, things that are supposed not to be done, things that are acceptable to certain tribes, things that are unacceptable to certain tribes. So let's, let's take a look at this story, the lepers, how Jesus healed them. In verse 11, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, Luke 17, 11, and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go shew yourselves unto the priest. I want you to understand that leprosy is a very shameful um, disease of the skin. So whoever is in this state, we have to isolate him or ourselves. We don't have a count of women, but mostly men isolate themselves, stay outside the city. And of course, even from their family, so they are ostracized in a way by the society. They cannot, because the belief is uh, leprosy is very contagious. And in fact, it turns to be more like if you associate with them, you are violating Leviticus law of the land. So you, that means they are categorized as unfit in the society. You can't even touch them. So when they were away, they cried to Jesus have mercy on us and jesus gave them instruction that is very very powerful in, in luke chapter 17 verse 14 go shew yourselves unto the priest what is against the rule against the rule because they can't even touch the people and then jesus christ was talking about go touch the the clean people well and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed they did. They had an encounter with God in the place of fellowship. They received instruction to do the unimaginable, socially unacceptable. The Bible says they did. And they were cleansed. You see that in verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God. You see what I was telling you about fellowship? receive instruction, obey true faith, and then you have the reward, then you make him known, you return back to the place of fellowship. So 10 were healed, one came back. The Bible says, and fell down on his face, at his feet, giving thanks, fellowship. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger, Samaritan. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith, thy faith had made thee whole. In other words, the obedience through faith, to do the needful, the instruction of God, and to come back in acknowledgement, result into wholeness. Well, beloved, this is the true understanding of faith. The true understanding of faith is receiving instruction from God from the place of fellowship. Obey that, see the result of that, and go back to him. Faith is not your power of imagination. Faith is not 
picture it is going to happen then you feel like you're on top of the world because you have the most uh, exceeding faith no faith is receiving instruction from the place of fellowship obey that instruction see the result of the instruction and in humble adoration go back to him and your faith get the chance to grow so when he talked to the disciples that well obey obey and you will see you have faith obey and you will see you have faith so jesus christ gave this to us he healed the lepers nine went their way and then one came back and jesus christ talked about him they are not found that return to give glory to god save this stranger and he said unto him arise go thy way thy faith had made thee all thy faith jesus did not say anything he did not say receive your healing no gave an instruction of obedience gave an instruction go show yourself the most difficult at that time go show yourself to the priest not even to their family members I mean, if I'm the one, probably, I will give an excuse. Will, no, this is against the law. In fact, I will, want, I will have to prove from the scripture. I know this is against the law. I can't even touch my family. But you want me to go touch the, the clean people, priest, that offer sacrifice to God? They did not. They obeyed. Those things are only possible with encounter with God. Those things are only possible from the place of fellowship. It is from the place of fellowship that God will reveal the unimaginable to you. And when you obey the instruction of God, then you will see the result of it. It is that simple. It is that simple. But you have to devote yourself to knowing him. We're no longer in the dispensation of Abraham. No longer in the dispensation of when Jesus Christ was here on earth. But we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. That even as you walk out of your house, you are in constant fellowship to listen to what he's about to say to you. To listen to his instruction concerning the situation. To listen to what he's telling you concerning your future. And then you will obey that precept by precept, precept by precept, precept, precept by precept. And that we increase the strength of your fellowship. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, here or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Say, ah, this is, this. no, 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 this is alarming. This is alarming. They were all healed without you saying things, just obedience. Wow. <laughs> you better tell us. The Pharisees were like, the kingdom of God should come. And he answered them, it's not by observation. It's not because you, you're seeing the healings or the miracles. No. It's right here with you. In the place of fellowship, in the place of fellowship is when you will start to live on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God will be fully established in your heart from the place of fellowship and obedience. Place of fellowship and obedience. Wow, what a beautiful thing to know God. What a beautiful thing to understand the mind of God. What a beautiful thing that God is giving his instruction to me. And I'm walking precept by precept until the last day. So when we uh, reunite with him, it's going to be a glorious one. Because we've been walking as it is in heaven on earth. From the place of fellowship and obedience true faith. This is what faith is about. I know that God wants me to talk about this to someone. So we go back to our story. 
in the next in the upcoming series about Abraham but one thing you must take note of is that his obedience was accounted to him for righteousness you know we we are advocating in the church of God be thou holy as thy Lord is holy you know believe in the Lord your God follow his instruction obey his instruction those things would not be effective if your fellowship with him is not effective and I'm talking about personal fellowship and call and um, and uh, group fellowship such as the one in the church of God you cannot be in the church of God and you you have a divided attention you cannot be in the church of God and you are concerned about what other people are wearing uh, or what uh, how the pastor is teaching or what the pastor is saying or somebody that offends you or maybe you want to be doctrinally correct or things no 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 in the church of God in the place of fellowship you must have undivided attention to understand what God is saying specifically to you even if whoever is ministering is not ministering in uh, physical perfection you will still be able to pick the instruction of God be able to say well wow thank God for our pastor thank God for mommy pastor thank God for her choir that is really for me. But if you are not sensitive in the place of the spirit, you are carnally minded. All you are thinking about is the lunch you're gonna have, or maybe you're thinking about, you know, the somebody that is causing you trouble or pains. Of course, those things you have to lay it at the feet of God. You have to lay it at the altar, just like that man did. In 16, Luke, 11, Luke 17, 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. The Bible says, and he was a Samaritan. No association. No association. And Jesus' hands ring said, Where they're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? He did not even allow him to reply. They are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. So that means it was referring to the disciples. You see, you're talking about me increasing your faith. But this is what you should know. That faith is tied to the strength of your fellowship with me. The more you know me and you obey my instruction, the better it is or the better it's going to be for you to tell this mountain to move or to shift from one place. And it's going to obey you because you're obeying me. You're obeying the authority giver. That is faith. When you obey the authority giver, you have authority over sickness. You have authority over physical things. Oh, you want to be rich, you have authority over those things. Oh, you, you want to receive healing in your body, you have authority over those things. Because you've obeyed the authority giver, that is faith. If you are disobeying the authority giver, the strength of your faith will be limited. That is all I'm talking about. And it is my prayer for you. As God instructed me to tell you this in this uh, um, miracle that you performed, I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you will have a better understanding that the strength of your obedience to the authority giver will determine the strength of your faith in the things that you have no control over. You have to depend on him. You have to depend on God. It's the totality of a, your existence. Except if you don't believe in that. But you must believe in that to even know him. It starts from knowing who made you, who you are. And then when you acknowledge him as the maker of your life, then you can start developing fellowship with him. And the strength of your identity will increase. You will receive courage. You will receive boldness because you have those things in the secret place. And so when you come into the public to declare who he is, it's because you truly know who he is from the place of fellowship. Let us pray. That I want to thank you for this awesome grace that I have to bring this teaching to your people. Just as you've instructed me, I've sent forth your teaching to them. It is my prayer that the Spirit of God will teach them more than my words in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God. In Jesus Christ's name, I have prayed. 
Amen. Amen. I want to remind you that the best way you can help other people is to share this teaching with them. And at the same time, you should subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date with new teachings about faith and other things we're going to talk about in the future. And as you do this, it is my prayer that God will bless you tremendously in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, the best way to be in fellowship with God is to obey His counsel. And God will continue to give you strength to do so in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much and God bless you.